What's up, YouTubes? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. My name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data. So in my first video, I talked a lot about what a data scientist exactly is and the core components of the work. I mentioned programming is a core essential component of the work, so I want to expand on that a little bit more. So there's tons of debate about what's the best tool for your work. Is it R? Is it Python? Is it Julia? SQL gets mentioned in there a little bit as well. And I think before we even address that question, it's helpful to take a step back and think about why do we want to use an open source programming language in the first place. And it's important to think about both of those parts, the open source part and the programming language part. Now in the process, I am going to bash a few tools that other people use for analytics and for data science. And that's fine because every tool does have some role and some use somewhere. But there is a reason why R and Python are the undisputed juggernauts of the data science world right now. So before I get into all of this, I would appreciate if you smash the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. Alright, so if you were asking me to be straight with you and tell you why you should use a programming language instead of let's say a simpler tool like a Microsoft Office product, Word, Excel, something that everybody knows, I would boil this down to one simple word and that's reproducibility. To have the highest quality work possible, you need to be able to start from your raw data and then look at your output. That output could be anything. It could be a cleaner, other set of data, it could be a report, a model, a visualization, but you need to be able to tell that story. You need to be able to see exactly how you got from that first point, your raw data, to your endpoint, which is whatever that output eventually is. That's super important both for you and for the people that you're working with. First of all, if you think you have a perfect memory, I assure you, you don't you are eventually going to have to revisit your work at some point. And it could be for documentation purposes, it could be to add on to it, but you're going to have to go back to work that you did in the past, and you're going to forget how or why you did something. And when this happens, the fact you wrote code in the first place is kind of a safeguard for you because that code is a paper trail, it tells a story, and it will tell you exactly how you got from point A to point B. Similarly, a lot of data science work involves collaboration with team members. So suppose you're using a version controlled system like GitHub. Users can check out your code, they can review it and add feedback to it, they can just get educated and learn from what you did, they can take a project from you and build on it and write code on top of what you've already done. Possibilities are endless. And at the end of the day, writing code in the first place is what makes that collaborative ecosystem possible. It's also important to be able to leverage the power of repeatability. Because let's be real here, Every day at your job is not going to be completely unique. You're going to end up repeating certain things quite a lot of times. Now there are tons of examples of things that you could end up repeating. It could be cleaning your data based on some kind of business rule. It could be extracting labels from data sets. It could be removing outliers based on whatever business rule you came up with that's unique to your data set. Whatever. You get the idea. There are tons of things that you may want to repeat. Now what's going to happen if you're writing code in a nice proactive fashion is these things which you're repeating over and over again, you can turn those into functions. Now functions are pretty cool because there's a number of ways that you can share them with other people. But they're really nice for you too because they almost take on a little bit of a snowball effect. Now what do I mean by that? So let's say you're working on a longer-ish task. Say it's something which takes like two hours. Well, once you're done, you can wrap all of that inside of a function. Now if you have to do the exact same task in the future, maybe on another data set, maybe on another project, you can just apply that function you've already written or at least extract parts of it. And then instead of something taking two hours, it'll take like five minutes instead. This ends up freeing up a lot of your time so you can end up doing more with the time that you have. Maybe you want to write even more functions, 
automate even more tasks, then you can free up even more of your time to do even more awesome stuff. Possibilities are endless. So when it's all said and done, learning a programming language is not always easy, and any language that you're going to learn is going to come with some amount of a learning curve. But I promise you that if you stick with it, you get good at a programming language, apply what you've learned in the real world, write code proactively with functions, you'll end up saving a ton of time in the long run because you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you end up being able to do more work with less time invested. So I hope I've been able to impress upon you the advantages of using a programming language. Now let's talk a bit about the advantages of using a programming language that's open source. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the definition of an open source piece of software, there's a lot of things which go into that definition, but the key parts are these. Number one, it has to be freely available. Number two, the source code of something that's open source has to be freely, readily available to the public. And then number three, users have to be able to, in some way, shape, or form, publish their own modifications or enhancements. And now, not all industries necessarily change that quickly, but data science as a field is constantly evolving as people develop new and better technologies. There's constantly new features with visualizations that are available, there's new models, there's new machine learning techniques, and it's super useful to be able to leverage the newest, latest, greatest technology that's out there that's created by big, vibrant user communities. And if you take some of the big open source programming languages now, like R, like Python, Julia is a really big up and coming one, they all have really large user communities which are constantly developing new packages. Here's the real beauty of this. I harp away in almost all of my videos about what a creative field data science really is. You constantly need to flex your creative muscles and come up with innovative solutions. Here's the thing though, honestly when we run into some problem, that's almost never the first time anybody out there has ever run into that same problem. Somebody out there has probably solved it before and then developed some kind of solution for it. And that solution, it could be something small, like a little function, or it could be a bigger package, which is really just a bundle of functions. I've had it happen to me personally where I was fishing around on GitHub and I found this function that somebody else wrote, which would customize a graph, just so happened exactly the way that the client I was working with wanted it. So that way, I didn't have to spend a lot of time writing the entire thing from scratch myself. Then similarly, there was another time I was working with discrete events and the interactions between them, and I needed to simulate that somehow. Well, it turns out on CRAN, there's a full R package that's developed for those types of problems. So when you're working with an open source programming language, there's almost always some kind of solution out there which somebody else has built. You can stand on the shoulder of giants, but if it's not out there, you do have the flexibility to hopefully quickly build whatever it is that you need. Now I do have to point out, just as a disclaimer, there are certain companies which are definitely going to be set in their ways. They're going to use other technologies, let's say SAS, SPSS, things like that which are a little bit older, maybe a little bit more trusted, and there's a variety of reasons that could happen. The company may have a large enterprise scale license. It just may be an older and more trusted thing for them. There may be security concerns with their data. It could be for any reason. There's not always a lot that you can do about that because that could be a large tide to go up against and not maybe even something you want to go up against. I do hope though that this video has given you some food for thought and at least makes you aware of some of the things that your company or your team is missing out on. Maybe you can make the case for R or Python or figure out the way a language like that could be used to complement in conjunction with whatever technology it is that your company uses today. Now there are actually more and more examples of integration between these open source technologies and other services. So just as some examples, 
In Power BI, you can write R and Python scripts in there. In Microsoft SQL Server in the 2016 version and later, there's actually built in R services in there. So there are options like that out there. You have to navigate your own individual case and find the best thing for your particular circumstances and your particular company. But once you pick up and get good at an open source programming language, you are on the road to going out there and doing awesome data science work. So thanks for watching this video. Until next time, Richard, on data.